Hey everybody, welcome back to AI Late to Class, and if you're new here, click subscribe. Tonight I'm going to go over three new Queen Edit Lauras, next scene, in scene, and I'll be going more in depth with the multi-angles Laura. So similar to my last video on Holocene, which was multiple camera shots like long shot, close-ups, etc., these lures are focused on making good starting shots for video generation with precise control. In this episode I'll try simulating many camera shots used in film, so this tutorial could be useful even if you're not using the LoRa and it'll have an impact on your AI video generations. So anyway, let's get into the workflow. Starting with the multiple angles workflow, and if you're new to ComfyEye over here can help. There's some folders there, ComfyEye models, and in the models you've got diffusion models. That's where you're sticking your FB8 or GGUF. Then you've got your LoRa's, and in particular they've got the speed up lightning four step LoRa, but we've also got to put our multiple angles LoRa in there as well. Got our VA folder and our text encoders folder. Uh, you can get your VA from here, your text encoder, there's your four-step LoRa. I'll have the link in the comments for this multi-angles safe tensor LoRa. And you can use this FB8 as your main model. I'm using the GGUF, but I'll have the links to the GGUF. Otherwise, you can go to that link and get the FB8. The first prompt I'm going to try is switch to bird's eye view. And it did a really good job of that. They all look exactly as they did. It is incredible the result this does. So there's not much more to know about this workflow. It's pretty easy. There's your seed there. It's on randomize. Got four steps because we're using the four step LoRa and of course one on the CFG. Now if we do want to change our sizes of our images we just unclick this latent image here and then we plug this one up over here and you change your size there to what you want it to be. If you don't have a computer powerful enough to run these models or you don't like the look of using ComfyEye, eye you can come over here and use the free hugging face space there is some credits a day i don't know how many it is but upload your image there and here's your drop down and you can see all the different rotations that you can use underneath that you can also put in extra stuff so i'd done one that was switched to a low angle view but i'd also written in here and make sure the shot is behind the person and that came out really well and just press generate you don't need these advanced settings they have no help this is the hugging face page for the actual model multiple angles if you look down here there's some info on some words you can use which is similar to what we just saw in that hugging face space. Down the page there's some really good samples to get you started like this one, original image, transfer the camera into a close-up shot. Underneath, rotate the camera 45 degrees to the left, and that one's 45 degrees to the right. Move the camera forward, move the camera to the right, move the camera upwards to a bird's eye view, rotate the camera 90 degrees to the left. So notice a lot of these prompts are different each time, there's not a particular trigger word which is good. So I've come across this website, 50 plus types of camera shots, angles and techniques which is really good. It's got videos there with the samples in them, but I'm going to come down, this is a good picture to have a look at. So you've got your extreme close up, close up, then medium close up, this is a really good way of showcasing the different shots. But anyway, I'm going to come further down and we're going to look at these different types of camera shots and we'll simulate that. So the first one is extreme wide shot. Well, I'm going to go over to Comfy Eye and give that one a go. So to get the result of the extreme wide angle, it's pushed them further back. So now we can see more of the couch at the front here. Of course, they've gotten smaller. The carpets move further back, so that way we can get a longer, further back shot. Of course, the image itself is a wide shot, so I'm going to put that in the prompt and see what we get. Change the image to a wide shot, and here we go. Now we can see a little bit more of the front of the couch. Now I'm going to come down here and bypass this full shot, because I think the original is sort of a full shot. I'll come down and try this medium wide shot. Because the woman is sitting on the couch, the model have to determine what is a medium wide shot. It's done quite a good job here. As you can see, it's a little bit more further out on this side and cutting a little bit off the top, not too much. 
but it's done this medium wide shot. Next shot I want to try is this medium shot, waist up and through the torso. This picture here is more like the torso up, but anyway, I come over here. It didn't work with the three women that I had, so I now tried with my other picture here, and it sort of hasn't done torso up, but it has done a different shot. Next shot is a medium close up, as you can see here with the shoulders and head, but when I came over to here and changed the image to medium close up, I've got more of a medium wide shot. Now I did a close up shot and it came up like this, which is more of a medium close up shot. So I'm sort of two levels away from where I want to be when I'm doing these generations. Here's my extreme close up right on the eyes there. And my own generation came out more like a normal close up. I'm going to go back through and try some of the recommended prompts now. See if I get some different results. So I'll try with this first one. So yeah, that definitely moved the camera forward. My prompt here was move the camera to the left, but it sort of did an arc left. Here's a shot I wanted to try and make the camera low to the ground, looking up at the woman from an angle. So I got this guy here, and I did a shot where it's looking up from the ground like the other shot. That came out pretty good, and I wanted to see if I could turn him around. Then I got this shot, and then I wanted to put the camera back up at normal height and got that. So it's really good at following these prompts. Wanted to see how well it did with non-humans and go for that bird's eye shot again. And this one's really amazing because they've all got their feet buried in the snow. It's kept that. The feet are buried in the snow. It's got the tracks and the shadows. It's noticed that the sun's over here and it's pulling the shadows that way. It's got that. It's even got this shadow and that there. All still in peace. Everything is completely correct. Also got this really good close-up on the gun. Having a look if this is any good at focus shots, shallow focus where you limit your depth of field and your main object is crisp or the background is blurry, you would have seen this in a few movies. So this has worked really well in this shot, he's really clear, you can see there's a blurry car versus that one where the overall shot looks the same consistently. Just try to pull focus this time and you can see there's way more blur going on and he is sharp so it's doing that quite good. See if it can do a tilt shift lens that rotates perspective within the lens. And that shot's looking really cinematic with this blur sort of going around there, keeping his face more sharper. I'm going to move on to the main angles now, which is what this model was developed for. So I'm going to start with this eye level shot. This one didn't change much, it's barely noticeable. This is the aerial shot, not quite in the sky, but it's usable. I've mixed it up with this one and done an overhead shot with pull focus. And it's kind of done that. So here's a ground level shot. It's done a really good job of this. Tried this extreme tilt angle. This one's come out very good too. Knee level shot. Moving on to our next workflow. We're going to be using next scene queen image Laura. So to try and make this sound easy. It's about the flow from one shot to the next. As you can see in these images above. On this hugging face space. You'll need to go to files and versions. And go down here. And you'll be looking for this V2 and click download here. Now it's just a simple queen workflow. Put the Laura in this bit here, and this prompt is probably the thing that you need to focus on. It's got next scene with the colon, the man has a gun pointed at his head by another man. His eyes are wide and pull focus on the camera. So that shot came out amazingly well. Uploaded the last output image and I've changed my prompt here. Wide shot of the two men wrestling, etc. It didn't quite get the gun in there what I wanted. It did do that wide shot and they are wrestling. And he is looking very consistent. And this guy is looking quite consistent as well. For our last workflow we need this in-scene Laura. So come over here on the hugging face space. I'll have this in the comments. And choose this 07 safe tensor because that's the newer one. So what does this Laura do? Over here its goal is to create entirely new shots within a scene while maintaining character consistency and scene coherence. So character consistency is the key here. And we haven't really got the best example here. It's got this guy and then there he is there again. Now if you want to use this in-scene annotate you need to come back up here. Click on files and versions and download this 04 one. But that one there as you can see. You've got to draw this green rectangle, so you'll have to use something like Photoshop or PhotoP, and then you regenerate and you'll get a nice close-up. Once again, this is an easy workflow, so in this case I've got 
make the man in front of a brick building holding up a gun in the air. And it did a really good job of that. And this one I just said, make the man holding up a bag of potato chips and smiling. And yeah, everything else is consistent. So with these three lawyers, we've got great consistency of character now. We can use things like first frame, last frame, and do some really cool camera shots. As well as we can use the angles and do rotations and things like that. Even the in-paint model would be good with some of these. If you found any of this useful, please like, subscribe, and watch my other videos. And we'll see you in the next one.